Show me some love. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Eighth grade open up resources. Illustrative mathematics, unit three, lesson three. Representing proportional relationships. Glossary terms, rate of change. The rate of change in a linear relationship is the amount y changes when x increases by one. The rate of change in a linear relationship is also the slope of its graph. In this graph, y increases by $15 when x increases by one hour. The rate of change is $15 per hour. Time in hours is the horizontal axis or the x-axis, and the amount earned in dollars is the vertical axis or the y-axis. Let's take a closer look to see how this line represents the rate of change. I'll put a point at the coordinates 2 and 40. Two units to the right of the origin along the x-axis and 40 vertically on the y-axis. I'll place the second point at coordinates 6 and 100. The first point represents 2 hours and $40 and the second point represents six hours and $100. It says that the rate of change is $15 per hour, so let's test that out. Let's start from the second hour. $40 plus $15 equals $55. $55 plus $15 equals $70. $70 plus 15 equals $85. And finally, $85 plus $15 equals $100. So, so far, it checks out just fine. One good question might be, why does the second hour start at $40? One would think that from zero to one hour would be $15, from one hour to two hours would be $30. But this graph shows that two hours is at $40 and not $30. So let's see if we can figure this out. 55 minus 15 is 40 and 40 minus 15 is 25, and 25 minus 15 is 10. The line on this graph shows that zero hours is worth $10. Here's a closer look. At zero hours, the line starts halfway between $0 and $20, which is $10. It's kind of like getting $10 just for showing up, then earning $15 per hour. The rate of change for this graph is $15 an hour, or 15 to 1, which is the ratio of 15 to 1, and can be represented as 15 over 1, or 15 divided by 1. And 15 divided by 1 is 15, so the slope of this line is 15. Lesson 3 practice problems. Number 1. Here is a graph of the proportional relationship between calories and grams of fish. A. Write an equation that reflects this relationship, using x to represent the amount of fish in grams, and y to represent the number of calories. Located at the bottom of the graph, along the horizontal axis, or the x-axis, is grams of fish. The x-axis represents grams of fish. Located along the vertical axis, or the y-axis, is the number of calories. Take a close look at the circled section along this line. The line goes right through the crosshairs with 100 along the x-axis and 150 along the y-axis. I'm going to use this to help me figure out more about this graph. I'll use these coordinates to get me started. So the value for x is 100 when the value for y is 150. If I make the value for x 10 times smaller, that would be 10. To keep it proportional, I have to make the value for y 10 times smaller, and that would be 15. So when x is 10, y would be 15. I can make the value of x 10 times smaller, and that becomes 1. And now I make the value for y 10 times smaller, which is 1 and 5 tenths, or 1 and a half. These x and y values are coordinates for points on this line. The rate of change is that y is one and a half times larger than x. Look at our first example. When x is 100, y is 150. 150 is one and a half times larger than 100. Look at the last example. When x is 1, y is one and a half, or one and five tenths. That's another example 
showing that y is one and a half times larger than x. So an equation that could represent that would be y equals one and a half times x, or one and five tenths times x, or y equals three halves times x. B, use your equation to complete the table. I left the equation and some important information on the very top to remind us. Y is one and a half times larger than X, and the equation is Y equals one and five tenths times X, or Y equals three halves times X. Remember, grams of fish is X, and number of calories is Y. It's the number of calories that will be one and a half times larger than the number of grams of fish. Let's start with one gram of fish. What's one and a half times larger than one? One and five tenths or one and a half. This means that one gram of fish has one and a half calories. Let's look at a thousand grams of fish. What is one and a half times greater than a thousand? One and a half times a thousand is 1,500 or 1,500. A thousand grams of fish has 1,500 calories. This last one starts with calories, so instead of multiplying by one and a half, we have to divide by one and a half. 2,001 calories divided by one and a half equals 1,334 grams of fish. 1,334 grams of fish has 2,001 calories. Problem number two. Students are selling raffle tickets for a school fundraiser. They collect $24 every 10 raffle tickets they sell. A. Suppose M is the amount of money the students collect for selling R raffle tickets. Write an equation that reflects the relationship between M and R. The amount of money collected is 24 tenths larger than the amount of tickets sold. 24 tenths can be reduced or simplified to 12 fifths. The amount of money collected is 12 fifths larger than the amount of tickets sold. This sentence will help me write an equation that reflects the relationship between M and R, with M representing money collected and R representing raffle tickets sold. The equation I came up with is M equals 12 fifths times R, or M equals 12 fifths R. B. Label and scale the axes and graph this situation with M on the vertical axis and R on the horizontal axis. Make sure the scale is large enough to see how much they would raise if they sell 1,000 tickets. Let's graph this situation with money on the vertical axis or the Y axis and raffle tickets along the horizontal axis or the X axis. Remember, our equation is M equals 12 fifth times R or M equals 24 tenths times R. Or this equation, see if you can figure it out. M equals what number divided by a thousand times R? Or M equals 2,400 divided by a thousand times R. 12 fifths, 24 tenths, and 2,400 thousandths are all equivalent fractions. Their equations all have the same meaning. I think I'll use M equals 24 tenths times R and M equals 2400 thousandths times R to help me come up with coordinates to plot points on this graph. I'm going to label the origin, which is the zero value for X and the zero value for Y. Remember, according to my formula, R is always going to be 24 tenths times larger than M which means the x value will always be 24 tenths times larger than the y value. Let's say the x value is 10, then the y value must be 24. This makes an ordered pair or a set of coordinates. The x value is 10 and the y value is 24. I'll plot a point to represent 10, 24. Let's just go straight to selling a thousand tickets. The X value is 1,000, the Y value is 2,400. I've plotted those points, now we can draw the line that this formula represents. Both the slope and the rate of change is 24 tenths, or like we said earlier, 12 fifths. 
Problem number three from eighth grade, unit two, lesson 10. Describe how you can tell whether a line's slope is greater than one, equal to one, or less than one. I'll use a graph to illustrate this point. Let's say that the horizontal base of a triangle is four units and the vertical side of the triangle is six units. This would create a slope of six fourths and can be simplified or reduced to three halves. If the vertical length is greater than the horizontal length, then the slope is greater than one, like this example. Let's try another one with a horizontal length of four and a vertical length of four. This slope would be four over four or one. If the vertical length and the horizontal length are equal, then the slope is one, like in this example. In this last example, the horizontal length is six and the vertical length is two. This would have a slope of two over six, which can be reduced or simplified to one third. When the vertical length is shorter than the horizontal length, the slope is less than one, like in this example. Problem number four from eighth grade, unit two, lesson 12. A line is represented by the equation y over x minus two equals three elevenths. What are the coordinates of some points that lie on the line? Graph the line on graph paper. The equation is important. y over x minus two equals three over 11. This is actually telling you the value for y. When x is 13, y equals three, because 13 minus two equals 11. When the value for x is 13, then the value for y is three. Now we have our first set of coordinates or ordered pairs. The x value would be 13 and the y value is three. You can rewrite this equation as y equals 3 elevenths times x minus two. Let's use this ordered pair 13 and three. Let's plug in the x value, that's 13, and plug in the y value, that's three. Now the equation reads three equals 3 elevenths times 13 minus two. 13 minus two is 11. Now the equation reads three equals 13 elevenths times 11. And 13 elevenths times 11 is 33 elevenths. 33 divided by 11 is three. Three equals three. Let's use our new equation to create another set of ordered pairs. I'll use a T-chart to illustrate what's going on. Let's use two as the value for x. Now to find the value for y when x equals two, we'll just plug the two into the equation. y equals 3 elevenths times x minus two. This is where we're gonna plug the two into where the x is. Now it reads y equals 3 elevenths times two minus two, and two minus two is zero. So 3 elevenths times zero is also zero. For this equation, when the value for x is two, the value for y will be zero. Now we have our second set of ordered pairs. The x value is two and the y value is zero. We need at least two sets of ordered pairs to graph a line, and we have those sets, so let's start graphing. Move 13 units to the right on the horizontal axis, which is the x-axis, and three units vertically on the y-axis. Now we can plot our point. Before we can draw our line, we need to plot our next set of coordinates. Starting at the origin, like always, for the x value, we need to move two units to the right, and for the y value, zero units, so we don't have to move up at all. So we can plot our point right there at two units to the right of the origin. Now we can draw the line that represents the equation and these two sets of ordered pairs. Math tutors charge $40 per hour. Help me help you by disrupting YouTube's algorithm. Like, comment, share, and subscribe.